All right, my friends, welcome back to Frog Boy X1 Gaming. I'm Andrew, and today we're going to be reviewing the PlayStation 5 Pro. So if you guys like this content, don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel, and it helps me to be able to buy things like this so that I can review them for you. Now, the PlayStation 5 Pro is 16.7 teraflops. It's not 33.5 teraflops. It is essentially... Um, an upgraded version of the PlayStation 5 that is already out. Now, before I even get into the rest of this review, I do feel like if you were to buy a 1440p monitor, if you already have a PlayStation 5, I do kind of feel like you would be in a... I, I kind of feel like that would be a good option if you already have a PlayStation 5 and, you are, and, and you're not in a position to go out and buy one of these right now. Um, I do feel like that is probably a better option for you. There's some really good monitors out there that are 1440p that you could easily get and still essentially get close to the image quality that you're going to get from this on a 1440p monitor versus a 4K display. Now, when I review the PlayStation 5 Pro, this is going to be on a 4K screen. I played through, I've, I've been playing this for about 10 almost 10 hours today um, on my LG C2. Now, I did my first impressions video, I did a review for PSSR, and I have also done a video on Gran Turismo 7 in PlayStation VR 2, uh, as well as some other VR 2 kind of stuff. So, all right, first of all, let's talk about the build quality of this thing. Now, this thing is a lot smaller, thinner wise. Obviously, it's definitely smaller width than the uh, PlayStation 5 original. Um, the uh, it, It's the same height. It's about as high as that one. I do like the Adidas stripes in here. Um, in terms of like thermals and all of that stuff, feels really, really cool. Really, really like no, no big thing. Um, I do like how the lights are down here now. I, I really like that. I think that is a very good touch. Um, it really does make this look good. I, I like the smaller form factor, my friends. This thing looks a lot more premium and it, and it just looks significantly better overall in person. Like you have to see this thing in person and like hold it in your hands and, and like get a good feel for it. Uh, doesn't seem like it's cheaped out on like the overall build quality or anything like that. Like this actually feels, ha, <laughs> a dog came in and got her bone. This actually feels really good, man. It feels like a premium, it feels like a premium product. It, it does. Now it comes with just a standard controller. I've been using my DualSense Edge with this bad boy all day long. Um, didn't even take the other controller out of the package. Like it's it's still in there. I I have I, I don't like those ones. I, I don't like the way they feel. The dual sense edge is significantly better. I feel like if you're gonna buy a PS5 Pro, you might as well get the dual sense edge to go with that. Um, get yourself the whole premium kit to be completely honest with you, the PSVR2 and the the uh, the overall uh, console itself. Now, one of the things that a lot of people are going to probably feel when they get into their PlayStation 5 Pro, because it does have a new um, overall, like, like you're, you're met with like this new UI and all of this stuff that just kind of like jumps out at you. Um, it looks pretty good, but it, it is pretty invasive. It keeps like asking you if you want to get a re or take a tour and all that stuff. You just got to keep telling it no, and then finally it will get the point and be like, okay, he doesn't want to see... So just keep being no, keep being deliberate with it, and, and it will start to leave you alone as you go. Um, I've tested over 32, well, 37 different games today, um, all the way down to Returnal. If you've been at the channel for a while, you know that was one of the first games that I reviewed on the PlayStation 5 was Returnal, and I was like, oh, this game is disgusting looking. It looks significantly better on PS5 Pro, and it doesn't even have a Pro enhanced freaking <clears throat> patch for it. It just looks better. I would say the majority of games that I played on the PS5 Pro today, automatically, if they had like dynamic resolution scaling or dynamic frame rate or any of that kind of stuff, it definitely helped a lot of those. Um, definitely like boosted those things like really, really well. When you look at stuff like the PlayStation 4 games that I tested, um, I tested some um, 
some Dirt 4, some Mad Max, and some Drive Club. Drive Club still running at 30 frames per second, but man, it made that look very good. That, I mean, overall image quality on that looks very good now. Nice and crisp and sharp. Looks very good. Uh, same with Mad Max as well as um, Dirt 4. All of those looked really, really good. So it does kind of help with the image quality on that. I do think a lot of people are going to appreciate that. If you're still playing PlayStation 4 games, you'll probably appreciate that. You'll probably be like, oh, okay, yeah, that looks pretty good. That, that definitely enhances the overall visual quality of the game itself. Um, for most PS5 games, for most PS4 and PS5 games, you know, like PS4 Pro enhanced games, stuff like that, um, if they had dynamic resolution, it will bump those games up automatically. So you take a game like, um, like Assassin's Creed Valhalla, it bumps this one, it, it bumped that one up pretty much to damn near 4K. Like it looks 4K now. It looks nice and crisp and sharp and just, it looks, it looks really good. Uh, some of the other, you know, upscale or some of the other games that I've played, all, all of them tend to look and run at higher resolution. They all look pretty decent. It, it, it does overall enhance those games and make them look significantly better. If they, a lot of the games that have like frame rate issues and stuff, it does kind of solve some of that to an extent, especially like patched games. But games that are not patched, it, it just kind of depends. Like, it, it, it really does depend. Every, almost every single thing that I played today pretty much was running a lot smoother. I mean, definitely within the VRR window, so I wasn't noticing like a bunch of drop frames or hitching or, or anything like that. Like, the overall experience felt pretty dang good today. I was like, wow, man, this was... I would say when I first got it, you know, maybe that first half hour or so, when I was playing, when I made the like like the first video, I, I, I was kind of feeling like, oh man, I don't know if this is worth it. But after spending so much time with this, 10 freaking hours today on this PlayStation 5 Pro and seeing things and like really looking at it without any type of bias or, or worrying about like the price or, or any of that kind of stuff, you start to find a pattern of like, okay, okay, okay. When you're testing like old games and games that are not patched for PS5 Pro, you're gonna be like, oh man, I don't know about this. I don't know about this. But if you start one after another, boom, 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 back to back to back, games that are actually enhanced for PS5 Pro, you'll start to be like, okay, like this looks good. Like this is definitely worth that. Um, I would say about Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. When I got to Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart and I'm sitting there with full on ray tracing and everything just enabled and I'm looking at that image quality and I'm like, dang, this looks really good. This is on a 4K TV, it looks good. I'm getting ray tracing and it just feels significantly, it looks smooth. It, it felt, it looked and felt like I was playing on, because I played through that on performance mode when it first came out. And so being able to play on a performance level with the visuals and still be able to have ray tracing enabled, I was like, wow, this is good. And then playing Spider-Man 2 and then going to like Horizon Zero Dawn, Horizon Forbidden West and, and playing these games and sitting in there for a while and looking at them, I was like, man, you are kidding me this looks incredible now yes these are all old games my friends these are games that have been out for a while and there is not nothing really new on the horizon just yet like i get that so that there's a major factor that like if you want to experience and play those older games that you already have yeah it's worth getting definitely it's definitely worth getting the stuff that i seen tonight with the games that i played I'm like, wow, this is going to be a good console going forward. Now, is that going to translate over to all games, third-party games? You don't know. I mean, you don't know. But I mean, when I look at something like Square Enix's Final Fantasy VII Rebirth and, you know, Kyo, Kyo, Kyoe Tecmo's um, um, way, or what was it? Ronin Rise, uh, yeah, Ronin Rise of the Ronin. I, I look at those games and I see that they're like, they're sharper, they look cleaner, they look better. I'm like, okay, yes, I think this is going to translate pretty well over to other games out there as they can start to receive their PS5 Pro patches. Now, there's a lot of other games that I haven't tested because I, I haven't bought them. I don't have them. I don't have 
Crew Motor Fest on a PS5. I don't have some of these other games like Test Drive Unlimited, but I am thinking about picking up a couple more depending on how well these reviews do. If these videos do well, maybe I will pick some of those games up and I will start testing those as well. But when we're looking at games like Far Cry 6 that used to have screen tearing and all of that stuff and it's completely gone now and it just looks incredible, all the way down to how PlayStation VR 2 is performing now, I'm not getting the motion, the blur anymore out of my headset. Like it is just as good now, is it is it almost as good as it is on my PC. Obviously my PC can push it significantly harder, but now I'm not getting the motion blur. I'm not getting the, uh, the, the mirror or any of that kind of stuff. It just looks clean and smoother, but I also am getting sick quicker on the PS5 Pro playing PSVR 2. So I don't know what's going on with that. I was really feeling it and I was like, oh man, like why am I feeling so sick after playing like Gran Turismo and, and, and like some of the other stuff. And I think it's, I'm really hoping that it's just because, like, I usually get sick on the shooter games, but I never really get sick on the racing games. So we'll have to figure that out and hopefully we'll be able to figure that out. Um, obviously there's still some games like Gran Turismo 7 doesn't have the uh, the full on play PlayStation 5 Pro patch. So can't really test that one out too much, but overall guys, I do think that this, I do think that this console is going to pay for itself eventually. I do. I, I do think that eventually it's going to have the games that you want. It's going to have the stuff that you want and it's going to, and it's going to start making the games that you already have. Um, better so it, it is eventually going to be worth the money but it is it is hard to argue paying seven hundred dollars for a for a console like i get that man i i completely understand that for me personally had i not switched over to pc guys i think that i think that this right here I, I honestly think, and this this is my honest opinion, guys. Had I not switched over to PC, I would have bought this day one like I did, and I would have been like, whoa, yeah, I would have been blown away. I'd have been blown away. I mean, obviously, PC is still significantly better. I was just, before doing this review, I was looking at Horizon Zero Dawn Remastered on PS5 Pro and PC, and I was like, ooh, boy, <laughs> that's, that's, that's got a pretty decent little gap there to it. You know, you just have significantly more like everything on the PC version that you can turn up, but it looks incredible on PS5 on a 4K screen. And to the, I, I am on a, I am on an ultra wide monitor on the PC version, so it's not like for like. Obviously, um, I'm definitely down sampling, so I'm getting you know a, a better overall image quality. Whereas it would be nice if the PlayStation 5 Pro could actually run at 8K and down sample, but here's the thing with that guys it's still only like 32 32 gigabyte put through with the hdmi 2.1 so that is that it, it is it is still kind of you know a little bit limited and, and there are some things about this that do feel gimped it's got plenty of storage you could download a lot of games i didn't run out of any kind of storage obviously i put a new two terabyte hard drive in there so overall guys i think PlayStation 5 Pro is a decent boost to image quality. It doesn't really do you a whole lot for frame rates or performance or anything like that. Obviously, developers are still going to have to optimize for the 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 Zen the Zen One CPU. Obviously, they're still going to have to they're still going to have to optimize for that and try to get you the best overall performance that they can do out of that. But when it comes to visual hardware. I think I think you're on I think you're on solid ground. PSSR, if you watch that review, I do like it. I think it is very good. I think it 100% corrects a lot of the issues that you're getting with some of those games when you're buying them and they're 864p and they're fuzzy and blurry. It's getting rid of that. Like it is getting rid of that and making it so it looks good on my LG C2. That's a good thing. I'm happy with that. Uh so yeah, I, I think that if you've already invested in, in, a, in a high high quality, high end TV, yeah, there's no reason not to buy a PlayStation 5 Pro because it will give you the overall image quality that you want and desire. The only real big problem is, is the performance. Like that's the only thing that I can really see that takes away from this experience to an extent where it's like, oh man, like that, that, that kind of sucks. I wish it would have been 
Um, I wish it would have been a little bit better. I wish they would have put um, like a, a better CPU in there. But overall, guys, I think the overall package is pretty fine. I, I do, you know, obviously there's going to be people out there that are going to be hating at it and mad at it just because of the price and stuff. But after spending 10 hours with it, guys, I'm satisfied with the overall experience. And I think it is a good i think it is a good console like i i will look forward to playing more games on it and and potentially even buying you know some some games when they come out for it i, I i'm actually thinking about it so all right guys if you like this content do not forget to like and subscribe i got a whole bunch of content coming out this weekend we're going to be doing the t the t598 um <clears throat> We're going to be doing a lot of racing stuff this weekend, so hopefully you guys are looking forward to that. So am I, and we'll be doing most of that testing on PS5 Pro. So, all right, guys, we'll see you later.